1225. Uh, first on, on the agenda, agenda sort of right, topics not re reasonably anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting. Anything? No, the Housing Authority okay. has nothing. All right. Uh, approval of the minutes. I have a couple of corrections, but they're just um, uh, like spelling, grammatical stuff. We don't need to go through those, you know, typos, stuff like that. But can we just accept them, uh, uh, the, accept the minutes as amended? Mm -hmm. Uh, as amended as corrected i meant oh so you just so you just say correct go through and check your grammar ladies and then well it. i can't <laughs> help it i used to edit no, no, uh, academic papers i can't help myself so uh i've just corrected some grammar and some typos that kind of thing uh it's nothing worth spending any amount of time on can we just uh uh, accept them as corrected unless there's something of substance that needs to be looked at. And then I'll hand them off to Pam to, you know, be corrected. I think you just need a second. Is there a... uh, I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? All right. Okay. Financials, uh, the warrant report. Um, I'm not sure if you have any questions. There's really not anything exciting on the warrant report um, other than the usual um, monthly expenditures. Can I ask a question about specific items on the warrant report? Absolutely. Um, well, for uh, either Mary or Pamela, uh, what is the status of all this mice control stuff? What's what's going on with that? I can chime in. Okay, thanks, Bruce. Okay, so we had um, when I came on board, I, there was some ongoing mice issues. <clears throat> I, I think it was in building two. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and so we went ahead and uh, scheduled a uh, long-term repair for that, and we have uh, mice come. We have them pest companies coming every month to wherever we have a problem. So we had problems in building two. We did three consecutive months of um, crawl spaces, every unit, outdoors, indoors, you know, doing the full inspections, bait traps and all. And then we had two more buildings, uh, building five and then building seven. So we did the same thing there. I just want to attack it and give everything we got to get that under control as soon as I have a problem. So. There has been um, three different buildings, three consecutive months each, just to try to get all those under control. Yeah, I've got a follow-up question, Bruce. Uh, did you did you all was the pest control company or maintenance able to discern the cause of this mice invasion? Um, yes, um, each each place was is a little different, but the uh, the first one and probably one of the biggest was there's some bird feeders that was at an adjacent uh, building, and it was getting filled up every day with lots and lots of food that just the the pest company said there's no way they're going to go after our bait if you have all of that food right there, so we asked that person to eliminate that and they did. And um, and then, you know, we just we actually also use the more inviting bait at that building that it costs a little more, but it it's it's more likely to work. So what about like, the other buildings? Um, we've been pursuing the ongoing uh, treatments there as well. Um, we did recently get when I was surprised uh, a work order at one of the buildings that we did three consecutive months at already. So we're we're providing traps and we have a work order in to investigate what's going on. Sometimes it's other issues like um, bad, you know, conditions like 
food all over the floor and stuff like that. So um, the last one that we just got after the third consecutive month, I put in a work order for it. And that was just this week. Okay. So, so there's going to be some investigation about what's attracting all these mice through warm weather, which is, I would think, a bit unusual. They will sometimes come in in the wintertime, those field mice, they'll come in in the wintertime seeking warmth. But I, I think it's a little shocking to have them so attracted in the summertime when they still should be out in the fields. Right. I heard that the uh, drought conditions, it, added to that because the mice were trying to get in and find water because it was it was a drought. So it's not just bird feeders or people putting out food for the animals. It's also if people have containers of water for whatever purpose, they could be coming in for that. Okay, gotcha. Right. So it wasn't at this housing authority, but at one of the other ones, that's what the issue was. It was pet food and pet water was out and that was attracting mm -hmm. the mice. So okay. Any other questions on the warrant report? Motion made to accept. I move we accept. And we're working on, is it September 1st to 9.30 we're working on? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there a second? I think he's muted, unfortunately. Excuse me. Second. Somebody unmute Harry. Harry. Harry, can you click on your microphone? He's saying second. Can't hear him. Harry, up there in the corner right, I, I, you I, see I, a I, mic I, button? I, Hit that mic button. I, oh, here's I, Pamela. I, okay. I got it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> Yay. I'll have the double G and T with the uh, <laughs> lemon and gotcha. wine. I seconded the warrant Second. motion. No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Next one. Uh, the treasurer's report. Okay. This all of it? September 1, yeah. Let's see. Any questions on our treasurer's report? We're still operating two checking accounts, Kerry? Yes, we are. And I thought we were not going to have peoples at some point. I am trying, Harry. It's, it's becoming quite the process. It's it's basically what I, I have to get um, our comptroller, the vendor web it's called, I have to get the direct deposits out of people's and into Greenfield Savings, and I'm having a heck of a time accomplishing that. But I'm working on it. So it's the direct deposits that are increasing that balance. Current, from 20, yes. From 2500 or so to a little over $8,000 in September. Yes, there is a five thousand, a uh, little more than five thousand dollar deposit for subsidy that went directly into Peoples because they have not yet moved the direct deposit authorization to Greenfield Savings. Okay. Um, and the twenty thousand dollar reduction at Greenfield Savings—that is the payment of all of our. Warrants and bills, correct? Correct. Your rent is deposited into that account and then the warrant comes out of that same account. Okay, so just one quick question. The uh, warrant it was uh, the total warrants were 34,000. And so difference between 70 and 50 is 20. Where'd the other $14,000 come from to pay the bills, please? Those would be your rents collected. Rents collected. So is that that twelve thousand dollars? 
on rent roll 667 just a question no your rent roll is the amount of rent we charge it's not necessarily the amount of rent we collect okay so where do i see the rent collected to make up the difference of the 34,000 that we paid our bills it's going to be um way in the back uh, da, 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 da. We had $13,811 collected in payments. It's on your tenant's accounts receivable report, which will be addressed later in the um, package. $13,811, I see it. Okay, I would, uh, I don't have any other questions, so I would. Uh, Make a motion to approve the treasurer's report. Is there a second? I second. All in favor? Pass. Aye. Aye. Uh, the quarterly budget certification. Okay, so we are at our quarter's end for September, which is actually also our year end for September. Um, Nothing contagious. <laughs> what's that? Oh. Sorry, I thought there was a question. So um, on your next page following the treasurer report is the um, consolidated monthly um, income report that our fee accountant provides you. Um, we're going to be discussing it a little bit more on the operating statements. But bottom line, at the very at the bottom of it, you're going to see our budgeted ANUEL was two hundred forty thousand dollars six two hundred forty thousand sixty three dollars. Um, our expenses were two hundred and nineteen eight oh six. So we're actually under budget by twenty thousand two hundred and fifty seven dollars. All right, hold hold on a minute, please, Carrie. What page is that? Right behind the. It's right. Be, it's on the back side of your treasurer report that you just read. All right, you 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 you're stating numbers. I'm not seeing them. So you have to show me what. Uh... Okay. Is it is it about the fourth page in from the treasurer's report? No, that's no. actually your um, the quarterly statement or the year end statement um, that is printed out of HAFIS. Can you show show it? Can you hold it up so we can see what you're looking at, Carrie? Oh, the sideways sheet. That was with the. Um... So, Gar uh, oh, I'm sorry. See. Harry just read off the figures from the treasurer's report. And the way mine printed, it's on the back. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've got some good days. His did not. <laughs> I have nothing on the back of mine. Harry, what's the statement? It's not the monthly income and expense? It is. What? It's, it's oh, it the is. monthly okay. income and expense. Okay, so that's that's the second page then. And then what? Um, but yours is printing uh, horizontally. That's how yours printed? For example, um, here's, here's no, my... Yeah. Here's my treasurer's report. Yep. Here's the back of that is there is blank. Right. Oh, there's and nothing. I have this, but this that's, is that's closed. what we're discussing. That's what we're discussing right now. Oh, okay. So it is the second page. Yeah, could you point out then, um, Carrie? Could you point yeah. out the numbers again, where they are, they're on that sheet, please? They're at the very bottom on the right oh, hand side. The budgeted A. It says A budgeted A N U E L. Which for all of us again is what? It's the oh, allowable. That's what she's talking about. It's right, Risa. Huh? Right here. Jerry, okay. Like so I've got this. Is that the same thing? Yeah. Yes. Go all the way down to the bottom. Yep. Right hand side. Okay. It's the second page in from the 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 second page in from uh, this one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And the, the bottom on the right hand side. It says budgeted A N U E L. We got it. We got, we got it. it. Okay. So A N U E L stands for allowable non utility expense level. It is our entire budget above minus the utilities. Okay. Okay. That's everything we can spend minus the utilities. 
So it was budgeted at $240,063. We spent for the entire year $219,806, which means we're under budget by $20,257. As of this quarter? As of this quarter, as of year end, because okay. we're at year end now. September 30th is our year end. That's a good thing, right? Oh, yeah. Yes and no. <laughs> yes, it's a good thing. Um, you know, we're a public agency. We strive, honestly, to come at zero. Um, so we actually were building our reserves a little bit, which is a great thing. Um, but we also could have spent a little bit more money. Okay. The other thing I want to point out is that at the very top, the subsidy under our revenue, you'll see that it's a deficit of 78,000. And I'll, I'll get to that in, in another page. It's simply these reports are a cash only basis. It's not an accrual, it's a cash income statement. So we report what we received by DHCD and we have not received all of our subsidy this year. So you're seeing a negative amount. Okay, they will catch up once we're audited and um, everything is finalized. They're going to catch up and send us the remaining amount. All right, so where does this 240 come from again? Because I see above there where you pointed out the 78,000. Uh, okay, the 240. 78,000 is under budget, right? It's budgeted for 92. We've spent 14, 78 under budget. Nope. Um, actually, that's our income. We didn't spend it. We received it. We're budgeted to receive the ninety-two thousand in subsidy. We only received fourteen thousand, and they have yet to give us the seventy-eight. Who's the they? The DHCD. Correct. And when do they generally send that? Again, once we're completely audited and our financials are finalized, um, it'll probably be be like January ish. I can't honestly tell you. DHCD spent they send out money willy-nilly um unless we actually call and ask for it they just kind of send it out whenever yeah, it's so, my understanding gary too that gary gary to pace our fee accountant has called that department too and said hey you haven't sent money in quite a while yeah so, so like the squeaky wheel gets the grease is that what it is um if we need money we need to call them and say hey we're running short send us our money um we don't normally do that because our cash balance is good i don't need, usually need that extra money um so they'll just kind of send it when they feel like sending it once everything's been finalized correct okay in the past i'd like to add in the past Mary, you, your mic's muted? not working i hear uh -huh. yeah i do too so in the past we used to call dhcd all the time for our subsidy um i just wanted to add that i have a question you kept saying the word audit so uh we're being audited is that the normal process or did we do something that triggered an audit no the okay. d pamela do you want to discuss pmr so um so the housing authorities are actually audited on uh twice a year from two to one, one is an independent auditor that comes in to review the books. And then we also are audited um, through uh, the Department of Housing. Uh, and these are, are now part of the regulations and it's just ongoing compliance. So every okay. housing authority goes through regular audits. Um, in addition to the submissions that we do on a quarterly basis, submissions through to the DHCD that um, staff members do on a monthly basis, there's lots of reporting and checks and balances to make sure that everything is is working properly. That's great. That's yeah. wonderful system. Yeah. So this this when I say audit, it's not like an IRS audit that they're coming into. You know, it's it's a normal occurrence for all housing authorities. Thanks. Sure. Any other um, questions? So because this is also year end, a little bit further back, the, the 
income statement that you held up, Reese, that Reese, that looks mm -hmm. like this. This mm -hmm. is simply, it's the same information that we just looked at, but it's in the format of our HAFIS system, which is the housing, I don't know what it was. It's That's um, this one, housing, correct? Yeah. Yeah. The housing Authority Financial Information System, I think it's what it's called, don't quote me. Um, but it's our HAFIS system. We input all of this information and then um, after you certify them that you agree with them or accept them, we'll load it up into HAVIS and submit it to DHCD. So it's the same information, it's just in a different format. Gotcha. So that brings us to, um, again, the operating statements, income statements are the same. There's also a budget included in your packet, which is right after your, um, quarterly operating statement. Is that the one called Department of Housing and Community Development Balance Sheet? Yes. If you go all the way to the bottom, and it's very small print, but account 2806 at the very bottom, it's net position unrestricted. That's your reserve level. So we're ending the year unaudited. We're ending the year $167,546,000 as your reserves. That's good, right? Yes, that's actually up five. That's a little bit more than a 5% increase over last year. It's very good. Your reserves have been climbing every year. That's wonderful. Yeah. For the, for the past five, four years. Um, actually, since, yeah. Yep. I went back to 2018. In 17, the reserve level was at 27%. It can't dip lower than 35%. Um, it's 35% of 50% of your expense level. So it's kind of complicated. Um, so in 2017, it was 27%, so it was too low. And there was issues with DHCD. And, and now we are, at the end of this year, we're bringing it up to 79% for you. Yeah. We're, we're getting really healthy, aren't we, financially? We're getting very healthy financially. Very Wonderful. healthy. Yep. So can I ask a couple of questions on the um, numbers here, please? Sure. When I look at the uh, quarterly operating statement, that's also year to date, right? It's the quarter, but it's also year to it's updated, correctly? Yes. It it encompasses the entire year, Harry. Our fiscal year runs from October to September. So okay. it's the it's the fourth quarter end, but it's also the year end. Okay. So let's look at the uh I don't know which page this may be. <laughs> you know, it might be helpful in the future that these our number these have page numbers on them mm -hmm. like at the top or the bottom so we can say page two or page four sure. yeah. uh that would be helpful uh so that we know what page you're looking at but since i don't have that let's look at the page that shows total revenue of three hundred and thirty eight thousand six fifty one and some pennies And the expenses on that page would be four twenty two seven ninety one and some mm -hmm. more pennies. Which would Karen, can you hold up the page you're looking at so we know what you're talking about? Yeah, I wish I knew what I was. Oh, you got about. it. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, I got it. And we're gonna go from those pages to future pages here or following pages. So we have total revenue of uh, 338,000 and we have expenses of 422, which shows us a deficit of 84,000. Am I reading that correctly? Yep. Yes, you are. Okay. But can I explain that this figure includes depreciation expense? and also pension expenses under 
Where are those numbers? The one that says that. Um, well, your depreciation expense is line 55. Okay. And your GASB 68 is line 45. Oh, hold on, bear with me. Now that pension expense, where did that go? Does that go to the uh, Hampshire County Retirement System? So it's actually, um, both of those are non-cash expense line items. Um, this is a cash income statement. Depreciation is a non-cash expense, as is the GASB. Um, it's not any money that we physically paid out to anybody. It's just something that we can reduce our income by um, for depreciation of equipment, large equipment, um, building expenditures, roof depreciation, things like that. All right, so the pension expense is a negative number. The depreciation is a positive number. The net of those 2,893,000, if you take that out, that 84 negative nine becomes 9,000 positive, roughly? Sure. I didn't do the calculation, but that sounds reasonable. Well, I'm just looking at the 95,812 minus the 2,853. Mm -hmm. And that's 93,000. When you remove that from the expenses, 93 from the 84 is about nine grand going the other way. Okay. So the next page, look at the next page. We have something similar 217, 283. Again, the depreciation, that kind of stuff. So the 66,000 negative becomes a positive number. Same on the following page as well. Okay. So um, just to clarify what you're looking at in the upper right hand corner here, your first page where you stated 217,000 as income, that is the 667 properties. Those are your state um, elderly properties. The back page is your 705s. I say back page, I don't know if, you're, if your next page is your 705s. These two combined give you the figures I was discussing. On the front, on the first page, correct. Yep. So we have to break down our elderly and family units um, in HAFIS, but it's, it's a combined report, the one I was originally discussing. Yep, and I see if I take the 66,000 negative and the 17,000 negative, that's roughly that 84,000 negative on the summary page. Correct? I I follow it. Don't worry. I understand it. Okay. I see what you did. Okay. Okay, so all of this brings us to um my pages are mixed up. I apologize. I agree, it would be helpful if we had them numbered. We have some modernization reporting um, that we also have to, it, it's mine's horizontal, it kind of looks like a chart. We also have to report in HAFIS on our year ending modernization um, projects. So that's what we're what's basically. The what's the title at the top of that page? Um, department. <laughs> Yes, it's that one. It's Department of Housing Community Development Quarterly Consolidated Modernization Cost Report. I think if it keep going. This one right here. And what, what is this again? These are your capital improvement projects. Oh, okay. Um, number 117068 is now closed. That was flooring at 101 Berkeley. 117075 no, she's on this are boilers. 
at buildings three, five, and seven, and that is also closed. Off the very next page. And then 117082 is the one that we're just starting with the window replacement. We've only spent $5,500. Oh, that's wonderful. Who's doing that? Yay. Bruce. Of so course, just, it's Bruce. <laughs> I'm just showing uh, something you could do okay. in the future. Right we there. can we can have different things like this and oh, look display at this it. Here yeah, that's okay. wonderful. You just you share your screen. <laughs> okay, so the the last one, 117082. Um, it says funds approved of 147,900. Those are the replacement windows, the project that we're just starting. And we've only expended $5,500 to um, Bradley Architects. Thank you um, for, for the initial drawings, um, Spec specs, specifications. Thank you. Yeah. So we're just starting that project, but the first two have now been closed out. Does that make sense? So because this is year end, you're gonna find in your package, we have some certifications that we need to do. Um, usually quarterly, I just need you to approve it and then we, Pamela signs off on it and we'll submit the minutes and the certification to HAPIS and we're done. At year end, we have three different certifications we need to do. Um, so I basically need you to vote um, that the first one is that you're accepting the certification of top five compensation form. It looks like this. And it's all zeros. We have to we have to submit. What is that? It's, it's called a fiscal year and form and certification. Bruce, can you share that one? Yeah. Perfect. And, and what is this again? The five. This five, is your top five salaried employees for the fiscal year. And you'll notice they're all zeros because Hadley Housing Authority does not have employees, all of the employees under the um, Amherst Housing Authority. So I just need you to say, yup, you're right. And we need to certify the um, top five compensation. Form. So can I? I'm going to chime in here if I can too. Sure. So even though it's it's this is um, zeros for Hadley, this is another one of those checks and balances between the Department of Housing, the budget, the board, and this assures that it it's we're reporting what the top five people are. You know, they target the top five earners, is matching up with the approved budget, and then it is matching up with the payroll that's going through. So this is a way that the Department of Housing tracks to make sure that everything is accurate and as as reported. And then the, the auditors look at it when they do the audit as well. So here's my question. When Amherst does their certification, Amherst has the five top earners and employees on this particular sheet? That's correct. correct. Do we ever see that from Hadley? No, we don't present it to you. Because it goes to the it goes through their budget. It, it goes, it goes to our board, the Amherst board. But you could see it if you wanted. All right, so because we're under the management agreement, we have no employees. Correct. That's why our reserves are so high. Right. We're getting there, yes. You're not paying fringe or, pay or payroll. Those may be questions later on. Bruce, where do I share my screen? At the top that next to leave, it says share. You see you have oh. camera, mic, share, and leave. Open yep. share tray. And then you can choose what you want to share, a specific app, application, or a whole screen. You could share like your second screen. You see it? You have to choose which one you want now. Uh, there you go. Where yeah, is it going now? 
<laughs> yep, and sometimes when I'm in there, I have to just rotate. You know, I have to go okay. view, rotate, left, uh, counterclockwise. That is so cool. Okay, I never knew that. Um, so I do need a vote that you accept the certification of the top five compensation form. Yeah. A motion made. Motion made, seconded. All in favor? Aye. Or you could do discussion. Through this. <laughs> okay, where am I now? Wonderful. Yeah. All right. The second um, certification. Oh, oh, lab compliance. I remember seeing that. This is a certification of compliance with notification procedures for federal and state lead paint laws. And it's basically certifying that um, the Hadley Housing Authority is com in compliance with our lead paint. And who certifies that we're in compliance before we sign? I do. I'm telling you that we did that. Where do we do it? Do we have like a check sheet? Somebody sign off on it? I don't know anything about lead paint, poisoning, all that stuff. So we're required. But you're asking us to sign it. So yeah. I'd like to know why or what it is. So what happens is we're required by law to notify residents of lead paint uh, for our 6 6 program. It's not applicable because we have no children under the age of six. So it's a law, the lead paint law. In family housing, anytime we house um, a family tent, a a family tenant, we give them the information about the law, and then there's a, a the blue sign-off sheet which comes from the Commonwealth um, that says we're disclosing all information about um, if there was any testing for lead paint, if there's any lead paint present, or if there's no knowledge of lead paint. And we check no knowledge of lead paint because the development work way is older than it's what 78 Bruce that they stopped lead paint. It's younger than 1978. It was built in 1992, right? There's no lead paint in right. the 705. But I think the use of lead paint stopped in 78, Bruce, or was it earlier? I may have lost Bruce, but it's so it's an early 70s date. Mm -hmm. and we... So I was muted and I was looking at the, the, the regs for it. So I was answering, but I didn't realize I was muted. But we don't have any lead paint at, at our complex here. But we are, but we're still, we're still, even though we don't have lead paint, we're still required well, to advise it. So that's what that is. I understand that. And what's item three, residential property renovation? There's four items on here. Two of the first two are lead paint and the fourth one's three are lead paint. What's the third one? What's residential property renovation? Those are following the regulations, right, um, Bruce, of if, if we're doing re, uh, re, renovations when the unit is occupied. That So like when if we do a, um, um, like what we're doing over in Belchertown, the asbestos abatement, there's notifications that we have to follow with things of that, that nature. And the same thing with the deletting. If there was deletting, there's a there's a whole series of notifications that need to go to the te uh, to the tenants about those things happening. None none of which is happening here in Hadley for this fiscal year. Right. So the supporting documents that go to this that you've signed or that you attest have done, you have those somewhere. We're just merely signing that this has been done. Yes. Yeah. And where are those documents? You have there's them? yeah, there's a, a file for lead paint. Okay. All right. So I just need a vote to accept the certification of compliance. Yeah, motion made. Accept. I'll make it. Second. All set. Who seconded? Rich. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And then we all voted yes, I yeah. think. Yeah. Yes, I voted. Okay. And then the last one um, is the certification of year end financial statements and tenants' accounts receivable data that we just had that discussion.
Do I need a motion to make? Yes. Is there a motion made? To I'm first, I'm moved second? that we accept all this. We just uh, yeah. just all talked about that's all listed here. Certified above, certi yeah. certified at top five, certified at financial statements. Yeah. So you're you're certifying to both for all three of you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Second. Passed. Sorry. I think it's all passed. Oh, okay. Perfect. Um, how do I stop? Stop. All right. So, okay, you found it. Okay. Thank well, you for all that. We stop <laughs> Look at all this. We still have to go through all this. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna have us. So next, out there, they got a the parking meter. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think she should come over. So next on the agenda is the um, fiscal year twenty three budget. Right. right. So, Carrie, can I can I interrupt you for a second? You sure can. I don't have a cold. No, it's my asthma. I can't okay. breathe. Yeah, that's, yeah, but I'm doing this to try to make you comfortable. <laughs> Not just me, my, my wife. I don't. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um. So it, um, we have the fiscal year budget for the coming year, and we have it early uh, so that you folks could have time to review it. Gary DePace is not able to be with us today. He's traveling, but he can come to the next board meeting and, um, and answer any questions. But if you would like to review it today so that we can, uh, you know, maybe prepare questions ahead of time for him. But we do have it, and then and we, we would need to vote at the next meeting, though, so that it was submitted on time. When's it have to be submitted? Actually, I think it's just what what was the thing in the budget guidelines? The 15th? December fifteenth for Hadley. It's December fifteenth. Is that because of our fiscal year ending on September thirtieth of the given calendar? Yes. Yes, it is. All right. So if we at some point ever had to decide or wanted to change our fiscal year, as I mentioned at the last meeting, uh, that date would change based on the approval of changing our fiscal year. Correct. As the DHCD does not send out the budget guidelines readily or timely. I'm not sure which words you would use, but um, I would think we're a 23 budget, you would get the guidelines depending on people's fiscal years. But no, they, you know, well, that happen. no, we all get it all at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have housing authorities that have a July to June fiscal year and um, the budget guidelines come out in September. So they're already a, a quarter behind the eight ball. So. All right, so I would move to table discussions on the budget when uh, Gary DePace would be here and uh, we have more of an opportunity to review what's in that 23 budget. Okay. Motion to table. So Rich, oh. you got a motion to table. All in favor? For a second. second. Yep. <laughs> no second. Okay, I'll second? second it. Fine. All right. Motion make made. Motion made the table and passed. So I just want to let you know um, that the entire budget and along with the worksheets are in your packet. Um, it'll also show you the the calculations of um, you know what what Gary's putting in um, to what line items. Um, the insurance, the calculation of reserves, et cetera. So I would suggest looking these over, um, coming up with a list of questions, and then next month when Gary can join us, we can go ahead and get this passed. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, property manager report. Unit vacancy report. So, 
We have leased up several apartments at the Golden Court, um, and we're well on the way of leasing up our one of our family units, and um, working really hard to vet the other two at Golden Court, um, or three. We have one, but we have two that are ready to go. So, um, any questions on that? Mary, can you just, not a question, if I can, Richard. Uh, Mary, if you can just explain, though, too, that one of, that there was another offer of a fully vetted oh. person and they denied. The, or oh, they two. Declined. We had two denials. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we worked really hard on getting um, two. One, a lot, uh, just, it feels like months ago, but it was just a couple weeks ago. Um, we worked this poor woman and she was, a couple towns over and by the time or not by the time but she realized where Hadley was to her car didn't work that well and her family was too far away and she denied the apartment um, both of us were very disappointed and then we had another person uh, again um, they came to see the apartment they didn't like it after being on the list that long <laughs> Mary can you, can you give us an idea uh, what's the the general reason people decline an apartment? I mean, I, I hear you about the person who lives a few towns over in her family, but, but in general, if you had to peg, say, the top three reasons people decline apartments. The top reason people deny after seeing the Hadley one is the size. Oh. They feel when they walk in that it's too small. And I really, I, it flat, I just, I think Hadley is the most beautiful housing authority. I, the, the floors are gorgeous. You have a front door and a back door that walk right outside. Um, mainly they think the kitchen is just too small um, and the unit's just too small. So. Um, and I go on about, you know, elder, you know, aging in place and you need to, you know, it's good to downsize. It's better that you can take care of this, this, you've heard the spiel. Yeah. Risa. I have heard the spiel. You've heard <laughs> my spiel. Um, so that's why they, they deny. Um, but I'm surprised because there's so many people right now on our wait list that are emergencies. And there's so many people that call us um, that aren't even on the wait list, on the top of our wait list, that, you know, they're emergencies and they're homeless and they're, they, they give us these sad stories. And and then they, they finally get up on that list and, you know, they, they walk in, they go, no, I don't want it. Then so Mary, it's not an emergency then. Mary, I just pulled up in um Harry's yes. holding up. It's the floor plan. Their apartments are approximately 482 square feet, which is on the small side. Right. Um and again, when folks are downsizing from a home or or a, a larger apartment, it's it's a lifestyle change. It's an it's an adjustment, but it's less to clean. That's, That's what, what I, I say. Would say. Yeah. And you have the outdoors. And in some housing authorities, you walk to a hallway. Exactly. Yep. Hadley I have a outside. I I have a question. Has um Mary might know this answer, but has there any ever been a look at somehow um redoing the kitchen or moving that door to the bedroom to create more space for a kitchen, that kind of thing to because the kitchens are extremely small we have um 23 inches of cabinet space i mean of counter space 11 on one side and 12 on the other of the sink that's really uh inadequate i mean some of us have jiggied our kitchens to to work we'll put in like a baker's shelf with a countertop or use the kitchen table in the living room as prep space but is there has there been any look at kind of maybe for instance bruce moving that door to the bedroom over a few feet to create more of a kitchen space 
Well, we did modify a unit. Um, we modified a unit to be more accessible for a wheelchair. Right. And that was removing the closet. So, and creating a closet on the inside wall of the bedroom. So you lose space and you make the bedroom smaller. Um, it, it's a, and it did make the, the, we made the bathroom bigger and the, the kitchen bigger. Um, it costs a lot, but, and they had to move the electrical and, um, yeah, I mean, that was your only, really your only option for renovating for accessibility for a wheelchair. But I'm talking about, in general, I, I mean, it seems like to me moving the door over a few feet would allow more cabinet and countertop space. Like putting the refrigerator in, in front of where the door is now because the doors moved down a few feet yes you'll have to re you'll have to move around and add electrical etc but then where the refrigerator is now could become countertop space so can i can i um no. speak on that so there's just at this point there's just not enough funding so yeah. even with the arpa funding so um you know when we look back at the mo the mod modernization report the money the money's for the windows that's that's a huge expense to change out the windows and we've been, we were very fortunate to receive the grant from the town for the community preservation money but even with that community preservation we needed to add some of our um additional our capital funding ourselves right. there's just not enough money and um with the arpa funding we applied for um in all of our different housing authorities we have one of our developments that desperately needs a new fire alarm and DHCD ran out of ARPA money, so it wasn't approved. So if there's, you know, a fire alarm's health and safety and then it's, so it would be nice to do, to add extra counter spot spaces, but unfortunately there's not money in the budget for it. I'm looking forward to learning how uh, we can kind of do that capital planning i mean you, i don't know enough how you do it but to to like over maybe the next 10 15 years we can strive to improve that kitchen area yeah. i mean it was designed for a 1962 kitchen and it just doesn't work these days when people need a microwave <laughs> people need a coffee pot there's just no nobody uses the old metal percolators that sit on the burner Right. And it wouldn't be safe anyway for some folks. I mean, there's, we right. need to probably modernize these kitchens and, and maybe as a board of commissioners plan on over the next decade, how to get that done. Right. And I, and that's what I was, that's what I was thinking you were thinking, Reese, is like in the future. And, and that would be losing that closet. Or moving the door. <laughs> <laughs> now, moving the door won't that won't that put the door in the middle of the bedroom and make less space for the bed right moving it and then moving it into the living room and because right space now where the door is there's kind of a flow to the bathroom from the living room to the bathroom yeah there the is it's a it's and a good move flow. That door over now now you don't have a place to put the bed because the bedroom's already kind of small Hey, Bruce, I'm just trying to figure out where to put my yeah. microwave and my coffee pot. I, I agree. I agree. We need to look at it and then possibly do a mod project where we do like so many units per year. We can't do them all at once. No. But maybe we can do a project and we could we could do a prototype or something and then do in so 10 many years year. in 10 yeah. years. Like yeah. somebody moves out, we take over the place. We do a mod, you know, we do that mod project and see how it works out. We can look into that for sure. Okay. okay. So My job for the day is done. <laughs> <laughs> so the next one is the accounts receivable balance report. Um, and this just shows um, where we ended in September and or August. And then the last column is where we ended in September. We're a little higher. Um, and you can see Huh. There's, I'm so sorry. I'm a little surprised myself. Um, I 
I, the rents are up. So it looks like you did recertification. Yes. Yeah. So, you, so you, you, you may have recertified, um, you know, at, at higher levels for, for the new rents. Um, the, the third column in credit, some people actually prepay their rent. Right. Uh, so we have a little bit of a credit balance going on, not too much. And then we did recently start charging late fees. It's $25 a tenant for habitually late tenants. Um, it's not something, you know, we, we, our system will automatically apply a late fee to a tenant who has a balance on the first of the month. Um, but if it's somebody that we're working with and, you know, we're, we know what's going on, we understand, we, ha we have the right to reverse that. Any late fees that are being charged are for people that um, have been carrying a balance and maybe Hello. not necessarily making an effort to work with Mary or the property manager to um, come up with a repayment agreement or something like that. So I, th they are going up. I have a concern, Mary, um, everybody. I have a concern with utilities, um, especially the family oh, units oh, over this really winter really where utilities are expected to skyrocket. Um, six, six, sevens are taken oh, care of because we, we supply the utilities for them. But the right 705s, um, they're responsible for their own heat oh. and heat electricity. And with with fuel expecting or electricity expecting to skyrocket, you know, it could be going up sixty percent. I'm concerned with the seven oh fives that the seven oh fives are going to go that tar balance is gonna get much higher over this this winter. I'm hoping we can, you know, work with people and um they need to notify us of what's going on so we can work with them. Yeah. So Kendra did put in, um, Kendra put in in the, in the newsletter, the, the information for fuel assistance too, because all mm -hmm. of our residents are, uh, can apply for fuel assistance and, and our resident service coordinator, Kendra can help them apply as well. Yeah. So they do the have family the units, the family, family, units. family yeah. units. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I am working with one of the family units. I sent her a notice to quit. So she is working with raft. Um, so she's collecting um, or going to be receiving some RAF money to help her. Um, and another tenant um, should be here. Maybe it didn't. She paid um, a large, it will show next month. Um, she I believe paid, she paid. Yeah, she paid. That in, in October. So October's balance will come down. Yeah, she paid a large amount on her bill. Um, Thank you for doing this, Carrie. Sorry, guys, that I was shocked because Carrie did this. <laughs> so I have a question on the rents. When yes. people qualify to come in to one of our units, is that how the rent is determined by their their gross income, income. their yep. income, the, their uh, their means to pay, uh, how is that determined? Their and, the rent, reason, and the reason for the question is because if rents are gonna be increased, can these people afford the increases in rents? Or how, how is it reevaluated? The rents are, um, for 705s, our family units, the rent is 27% of their income. And it's calculated that way so that they pay their own utilities. Um, whereas the 667s are elderly disabled units are 30% of their income. Um, so the family units, um, the family, like, like Pamela said, they, they apply for fuel assistance every year. And I, I've known these tenants for quite a while. And I do know most, if not all of them, do apply for fuel assistance. Um, and they're all gas. We have gas heat over there. So it's not such as oil, which is you have to pay when you get the oil. Um, I think Harry's saying, OK, so that that low income energy program uh, has a certain amount of money 
and then depending on the number of applicants, they divvy it out and then the folks receive their check in the spring. Is that right? No, the fuel assistance program pays, they send their bills to fuel assistance, fuel assistance pays their utility bills. So, uh, some portion or all? They'll pay as much as they, you know, fuel assistance, depending on your income, like housing, depending on your income, they allot you this much money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's the cost of being living in New England. Right. So so can I chime in here? So just to further ex explain, so it and fuel assistance will have a budget, and I believe they had they receive some ARPA money too, and it does it ends up getting divvied up depending on the number of people that are applying. Right. Some years you'll get more. Um, hopefully this year they'll get more because they have some ARPA funding. But again, mm -hmm. back to our, because Harry, I think I heard Harry say something about their income and means to pay. So when um, and when a tenant has a, a savings account, um, investment accounts and things of that nature too, those those are only counted as an asset as a, at 1% of that total. Um, it doesn't count as income from a, a retirement account or an investment account until they start drawing down and then it's counted as income. So it does go off of the gross income of the um, the individuals and then there are allowable deductions for qualified medical expenses and qualified medical expenses come straight off of the IRS tax form of what whatever you can deduct from the tax, uh, the IRS you can deduct in housing. Um, and then food stamps, fuel assistance, and um, programs of that nature are not counted as income. Yeah. So that would be above and beyond. And we also have the the state also ha allows for um, a deduction for a minor, and they allow for a deduction. We also offer a heat deduction. So there's also deductions um, through the CMR, um, 760 CMR, we have other deductions that are offered. Okay. Or given, I should say, not offered. We give them. So can Kendra help these folks through that? Yes. She Absolutely. helps them apply. Yeah. Absolutely. So can I, I just, I would like to jump in too when I think Harry, I think I heard Harry say that um, when rents increase, we are not increasing their rent. The rent increases simply because their income is allowing them to pay more rent. We're not we're not jacking up their rents and making them pay. It's just that their income is allowing us to um, have a little bit of a higher rent because they can pay a higher rent. We receive subsidy back from the government that's helping us bridge that gap between our revenue and our expenses. Well, and, and so they each year uh, residents have an annual redetermination, and it's usually it's based on when they move in. If you move in in J July, you're going to get information around July to recertify your income, and at that point is when your income would change or go down. Um, if folks, um, especially it, it, it does typically does typically happen in 705s, but it could happen with the elderly and disabled, if somebody loses a job or their, their hours go down, they can ask for an interim redetermination and we can lower the rent. So there's, that's that's the stop, get, that's the nice backing of living in public housing. What are they required to provide? A tax return based on oh. income that's yeah. increasing? If they, if the income is increase, uh, increasing mid-year, mid-determination mid uh, pay stubs. Okay. And one final question on this uh, accounts receivable. What happens to the $50 late fee? Where does that go? It's minuscule, but just a question. It's added to their ledger. As I'm looking at these numbers, I see how you get them. You take the August balance, September rents. Difference between September rents and payments is uh, roughly $2,300 added to the previous balance. I can see the 12772 balance, which includes the 322 credit, but there's no accounting for where that $50 goes. Again, minuscule, just, just a question. I don't know where it goes. It's not in these numbers. Yes, it actually it's in the in your revenue on your income statement. It's in the um, other 
uh, let me get the language for you. It's other um, other revenue, yeah, non so it doesn't, come, it doesn't come into the re receivables. Yes, it is in the receivables. It's added to their ledger. But it's in the bond. It's in the twelve thousand. It's in the what? The twelve thousand figure at the end, the September balance, twelve thousand seven seventy two. Not the way I figured it. That's why I'm asking the question. Let me just pull up my calculator here. You take the sixteen one fifty two rents minus the thirteen eight eleven payments and the three hundred and twenty two dollar credit. That difference I get added to the August balance gives me the twelve seven seventy two. The fifty dollars is not there. I'm just curious where it goes. It's not a big um, deal. It, it's not a big deal. I just want to understand it. That's all. I uh, it is there, Gary. Uh, Gary. So your beginning balance of August is ten thousand seven hundred three. We add in September rent sixteen thousand one fifty two. We subtract out three twenty two for prepaid rents. We add in the late fee, and we subtract out the payments. And we end with twelve seven seventy two. Well, potentially they did. If you're not seeing it in that total, then maybe they didn't pay the fifty thousand dollars. Fifty fifty dollars. Now, any payments are um, are listed the thirteen eight eleven. Let me explain it differently. I've done enough audits in my day and people have a different way of reconciling checkbooks and checking accounts and whatever. So I see what you did here. But if you let me ask you if we get to the same number. You take the September rents of 16152. Subtract out the 322. And the payments of 13811. That's 12772. Oh, there it is. Okay. Twelve seventeen. All right, we can move on. I'm not worried about it. Um, you were. It comes to twelve seven twenty two. You, you're missing the fifty dollars, but we can move on. All right, let's, let's go ahead. Uh, yep. facilities. Yep. Go ahead. Uh. Hey, capital. Any report on that or? Yeah. Sorry about that. I was muted again. Do a share. Oh, seven. We got seven. So I got seven. Oh, yeah, then it was $50. So yeah, um, this is uh, this is my this is something called a cap hub. And this is what I go into for projects. And am I on? Yeah. So this this um, project is the window project one one seven zero eight two. This here is a notice that I get whenever there's a something something held up. So this in this case, we're waiting on the hundred percent submittals for those windows, and they 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 were supposed to be you know they were due on October fourth. But they're not. We still don't have them. I regularly, you know, try to be the squeaky wheel and ask the architect what's going on. He said he's getting to it this week. Well, this is the end of this week, and uh, <laughs> um, I don't have them yet. Um, unfortunately, you know, he's kind of in the same boat, you know, where he says he doesn't have enough staff and whatnot. But that's kind of holding up projects. This this is going on in a lot of places. Um, getting getting contractors and getting things in so that's the uh the window which is our big big project i also have um other projects in hadley that um are are um just waiting for project scopes and design i was trying to get to it quickly but it looks like it's not uh, sorry it takes a little bit to jump around in here so these are these, that's our main money uh is tied up in this project though that 142. we do have um we put in from opera funds 
And so what we did was um, got for hot water heaters. Um, we're having some issues with uh, sustainability. They want us to put in, they don't want us to use, uh, if it's electric water heaters, we can usually do, but the boilers over there are um, oil burners. And when they're oil burners, they want us to replace burners with uh, like split systems. It's a huge expense and it's a lot of, it's a lot of money. So some, some of this kind of stuff is held up as we're having discussions on how to, how to do this project without putting in this whole uh, split system because of the sustainability holds things up. The chimney repairs is just waiting for a scope. Now that we just got it, um, the ARPA funding was approved. We had it as a project. And, and when we got so much money from ARPA, we basically are using this money here, this 44,000 is not gonna come out of our capital improvement. It's gonna come out of this ARPA funding. It has to be spent in a year. So I need to get going and, and, and get the spec going and go out to bid. Really, I, I work with the RCAT. The RCAT in Hadley is called the Regional Capital Assistance Team. And so they help with capital projects for small housing authorities that don't have you know, somebody to work on projects. So they, so I will work closely with uh, John Williams. He's my RCAT um, in Hadley. And we'll build the scope and we'll get, we'll get this thing done. We also are doing vacancy turnovers, you know, um, with the 705s, which over there in Berkeley. And so we do have a few of them that are kind of expensive. I mean, we're over $20,000 just for a unit, uh, 112 Berkeley, 107 Berkeley. We need whole new kitchens. We're doing whole new bathroom, new floors. Uh, a couple windows were broken, so we replaced them with replacement windows instead of trying to nurse these old, old windows. I didn't, I didn't replace all of them in the house, but the ones that were bad. And uh, so we're doing a lot of work in the 705s and that will come in, we'll be using this funding here. But again, we got to use, put some of that into ARPA. So that's gonna free up our funding for capital. By using ARPA funds, it frees up capital funds. It's kind of like Christmas for us, you know. So I really don't have anything else to report on the capital. Um, that's what we've been using the funds for between the vacancy turnovers and this window project that we're waiting to move. Nothing I can do to push it. I'm waiting on the architect's 100% submittals. Then DACD will approve it and then we'll go to bid. But that's why it's held up. I have a question. Um, I did go <laughs> snoopy peeky into the, the window of that uh, Berkeley unit. It, it looks very nice. Great job. The countertops, the cabinets, the flooring. But uh, would it be possible for the Board of Commissioners to take a field trip through that apartment before it's rented out so we could get a picture? Yeah, that, what, is this one, 112? No, I, I don't know. It Well, it's yeah. the one on the end closest to the community building. Yeah, I'll stop sharing. Pamela, I'll let you answer that. I, have, I don't yes. have a problem. Is that okay? So it's uh, we I, we can bring you into empty units just so that you have a an idea of what the units look like. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. I, yeah. I have um I have a little more work to do. Um, I I've got new stair stair runners um going in, and um you, you know, but it is coming along quite nicely. One of the things we did over there at one twelve is, can uh, I? Yeah, we just don't want to say the address. That's all. Oh, That's I'm okay. sorry. That's okay. I'm sorry. That's so okay. um, one of the 705s over there we're working on, what we're doing is putting in solid uh, doors instead of the hollow doors because they always get damaged and we're always replacing them. So it costs a little more, but while, while it's vacant and we're turning it over, we're putting in heavy duty tracks, heavy duty solid doors for the closets and the doors because we just think they're going to hold up better. And so um, those are some of the things that are, they're not all hung yet. They're, they're in the unit painted. If you looked in the windows, you might've saw um, that they were there. And we did to put some new flooring in and the kitchen cabinets aren't done because some of the cabinets, they have long lead times and they came in damaged. So mm -hmm. it really pushes us back to get them replaced. They, they, they're putting a, you know, uh, express order in whatever, you know, to try to get them quickly. But but I, I'd be happy to show it off uh, 
you know how nice it looks and how far it's come <laughs> you know so so pamela can you work with rich to arrange a field trip for us yes yep yep and i think it would be best to go in once it's completed well but can we do it before the end of november say before thanksgiving as long as it's completed oh before you leave sure yes yeah. absolutely yep okay thanks and bruce quick question who are we working with on chimneys i've been in those um, they, oh, I don't. I don't have anybody yet. Um, I have. Um, I have a company that that you know gave us um, a bid on the project. But we have to. What we have to do is take that bid, make it a scope, and then go out to bid for the repairs. Sure. So I will work with uh, with my RCAT guy to develop a scope, and then we'll we will have then we'll have something to to bid with. Thank you. I do have a company as a side note it's not repair re repairing the chimneys but cleaning them so i do have that scheduled the company that actually has been doing it for years and years they did it four years ago that they're coming out because there was you might remember in one of the previous board meetings there was a complaint about the chimneys not being cleaned i looked into it they're due every five years it's only been four i'm going to have them come out anyways just to try to appease everybody you know um, and just make sure everything has been cleaned and taken care of. So I do have chimney cleaning done and inspection, but then th this other repair needs a scope. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. So now, uh, next would be the work orders. Any question on work orders? No. Well, I, I have a question. Do the, do the hit we do work orders every board meeting? Do the work order history give us a, a tip off or a clue about, say, uh, catching stuff before it gets bad? Uh, uh, so we know how to step up, say, the the buy, uh, you know, every two every six month inspections. Maybe maybe some of this stuff could be picked up on instead of waiting for tenants to report. If we look for it at the at the uh, twice a year inspections, say when the fire when the fire alarms get or smoke detectors get checked, you want me to answer that, Bruce? Yeah. No. Okay, sure. so we do at, at annual inspection. That's that's one of the reasons for annual inspection is to to catch things ahead of time. Um, right. And then what, so that is done. And then so you'll see work orders for inspections when 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 they're done at those those times of the year. Um, and then we also do during the um, fire inspections. There's just there's a visual of just health and safety issues, blocked egress, right? Needing a battery. So what about are, do you do you look under the sinks because that's a usually a big deal the dripping pea traps and stuff yeah, under the so, so i will i so we do have we follow the massachusetts um department of housing correct bruce um their method of an hqs standards from hud for inspections and bruce who's in the Brady Bunch corner is um, Bruce was the state trainer for the Department of uh, Housing. So we uh, are okay. getting these inspections done right. Correct. Yep. He's we're 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 implementing some new changes going forward. Um, right. But it's uh, myself, Mary, and uh, just myself and Mary in this meeting are have both were trained by Bruce when he was at the state level. Okay. So it's it's no joke we look at we look at the people and i'll tell you i to this day I, when i walk into a bathroom i take my knee and hit the, <laughs> hit the side right bruce to see if it's uh, um toilet's toilet's loose. the toilet the toilet is loose <laughs> so I know, what I about to to toilets running up like um what i've seen before is toilets that even if the water's turned off there's still some running for some reason so yeah. is there any way to check that or do we even care how much water we use i don't know oh, no, we care. yeah we care and then so that would be monitored as well through accounting and through property management okay where they so especially you know carrie will see a bill that's higher she'll bring that to bruce and mary's attention and they'll they'll look at it but we we are very lucky that in hadley folks do report their um their work orders and we don't have an abundance of work orders either. They're just, right. when something's broke, people do call 
to have it fixed. Um, but it is uh, inspections is to get it ahead of time for but sure. Because yeah. Because that, okay, great. That has been brought up, you know, like toilet flappers and things like that. That's a biggie for me. I'm always saying, let's just replace the flapper. Let's make sure they're good and not, not losing water. Yeah. Um, I do have another project that's I'd like to bring to your attention that's not on the project list yet, but I got a call this week from the Department of um, Public Works in Hadley, and there's a the fire hydrant is leaking, so I'm up near the front of the property, so we're going to have to replace the fire hydrant. So I'm doing the initial work on get contacting contractors to come out. Um, and verifying the leak. They told me that the, the, the actual fire hydrant's leaking. So that's not going to be cheap, but it is something that I need to address. Um, the, I did find out that it is our responsibility from the main street out there. I think it's Highway 47. Uh, we have a water main. It's like a six inch water main that goes all the way back to Burke Way. So all, you know, it feeds all the buildings at um, Golden Court. Plus, it also feeds Burke Way, and that water main um, has had some leaks in the past. We had repairs done, um, I think, in the last year uh, from the invoices I've seen. Um, and so, but even though those two leaks were repaired, there's there apparently another one that the town is selling us. It's still leaking. They have some way of their equipment is saying there's still a leak. So now I need to do my due diligence and and get it investigated and repaired. So that's going to be coming up as a bit of an expense. <laughs> so, next Bruce. Month. Yeah, Bruce. I just wanted to add that this has been an ongoing issue for at least three years that the water department has come onto our property at, with their stethoscope and this, yeah, with okay. looking all over this. for some kind of leak. Um, and, you know, this is they said it was here. And then they said it was here, and they said it was here. And we had a water main break, totally not where they said it was leaking. And, you know, I know Bruce is going to do his due diligence, and we're going to go dig up the fire hydrant. It may not be there. So I just wanted to make that. Well, in, in the quotes that I have, the uh, company said, if because they understand this, I guess it happened to them. <laughs> It, and they they put in the quote that it's three thousand dollars per day for the crew and the equipment to dig the hole, even if they don't find the leak, and that does not include any materials. That's just you're 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 paying you're paying for all this equipment and all this crew, and if you start sending on us on a goose chase and we're digging up all these pipes and exposing to see if there was a potential leak over here and there's not a leak, well, that's still going to be three thousand dollars. So we 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 want to be careful about spending that money until we know that's where the leak is. So I'm looking for companies that will help me. They should decide put a cap capital project and uh, actually start changing the water main in there if we're going to start creating leaks. Well, Rich has something to say. Say that really loud. Well, maybe you could start a capital uh, project uh, replacing the water main if you're going to keep chasing leaks all over the place. Yeah, I. I've mentioned that uh, in the last this week as this come has come to my attention. I've mentioned this, and, um, but it, it is something that is probably like over a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. You know, it's not it's not going to be cheap. I, I and I I said I said a hundred thousand, and I'm thinking in my head like two hundred fifty thousand. But um, it's it's a huge huge project, and um, you know, I, it's just come to my attention this week. So um, it, it's it's in my it's in my it's in the yeah. forefront. <laughs> yeah, just an idea. Yeah, just be looking at. So, okay. A big problem like that, like a water main breaking down, I mean, could really cause significant damage. Uh, so, I like it that that you're looking into this. But I mean that that water main is. Let's see. My math skills in my head aren't really great, but but what it's. Uh, 40, 62 years old or more so so what's the reasonable life span of a water main well if i if i can just chime in here i mean the city of springfield has water mains from the late 1800s that okay are, so they 
it depends on the materials, it, the, the composition of the soil and things of that nature. Um, but we will be looking into how to how to get it done, how to get it paid for. We will be begging DHCD for some emergency okay. money. That was so my next know. question, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, Plus your CPA but, money. Oh, CPA money, huh? You, you, I think that you have somebody from the Board of Commissioners on the Community Preservation Commission now, so I'll put a word in. <laughs> okay. Who is that? Reese. Oh, are we all, <laughs> we all set with the... We We're thank you for your service, uh, Reese. We thank you for your <laughs> service. Uh, <laughs> Just trying to make everybody's life easier. Yeah. Preservation Act there, yes, yes. Are you ready to move on? Always. <laughs> okay. Reasonable accommodation policy. What the heck is that? So I, I, I'll speak just real quick on this and then I'll let Reese and Mary speak as well too, because um, Reese and Mary did meet with the tenants. So this is, a, this is pretty much a boilerplate policy that the Department of Housing, we should have entered this in beforehand, but due to the, the workings of the board, we haven't been able to get this through. Um, or on the agenda, I should say, not through. We haven't been able to get it on the agenda. We have two more also that need to come through. So the reasonable accommodation, um, we, we've been following the mass legal gu uh, guideline for reasonable accommodations, and we've also been following um, the lease on, on how things work it, um, with Hadley and the reasonable accommodations. This just documents and memorializes exactly what we're going to do, and it would be it's going to be a published report um, a policy that will be available to our residents when they're looking for a reasonable accommodation. It'll show you some of the the letters in the um, that they that go out. Um, and a reasonable accommodation is a request that an applicant or a tenant can make that would be an accommodation to either our policies, our procedures, or something physical, um, such as I need a grab bar, I need a tub cut out, um, I need a ramp things of that that type of na na nature. Um, so it is very um, straightforward. The, the Department of Housing provided the boilerplate template. I followed it exactly and inserted Hadley where I needed to insert Hadley. And then other than that, it is a verbatim the policy from DHCD. Reese, you, you met with the tenants with Mary, if you wanna tell them what happened. Yeah, uh, we met on Monday. Um... I don't know if my kind of informal head count, I think we had about 12 tenants there. And I have to say, everyone had uh, good ideas about uh, policies and procedures in general. But we did go through uh, the actual template um, insofar as possible, because this thing, the template alone, which is handed down by DHCD and basically all Hadley Housing Authority has to do and all we have to approve as a Board of Commissioners is just fill in the blanks. It's like Pamela said, it's boilerplate. There's there's really no discussion because it has to follow federal and state laws. Um, so the this policy for the on the tenants behalf, this will help tenants get their reasonable accommodations. And uh, it's a, a a positive thing, but I used it as a as a teaching tool with the tenants, so that as tenants we can all learn what goes in to making a policy and procedure. And this this is at 20 pages for the uh, for the thing that the uh, housing authority and the board of directors has to follow is like I said, 20 pages long, it's pretty detailed, but it will ultimately, uh, once it's implemented, and I think it's already basically implemented, will protect tenants. It'll it'll give a, a way for a tenant who's denied to appeal and all this kind of stuff. So um, uh, in, in our meeting, we also talked about, and this is off of the, reasonable accommodation policy, but using it as a spring springboard. We also talked about other policies and procedures pursuant to you all, you know, voting me to be able to have these meetings with tenants on policies and procedures. And we created a list of 
of policies and procedures that the tenants would like to work on. So uh, it was a very positive meeting. Everyone who attended had uh, something to offer. Yeah. So Rich, we just we need a, a motion, please, to accept the the reasonable accommodation policy for the Hadley Housing Authority. All right. Will there be a motion made? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, passed. Uh let's see. Commissioner discussion. Anybody have anything? Reese, do you want to uh, report on our visit to the select board or do you are you leaving that to me? <laughs> I'm leaving that mess to you. I might okay. interject, but <laughs> Okay, thank you. Well I if I may. Pamela, I just got a call from uh when I stepped out from Joyce, one of the select board members. They wanted to know if our meeting your meeting was still on with them on the Wednesday. So that was actually in a board correspondence. I, I did get an email from Jane Nevin Smith and Carolyn Bresnahan, um, and they were offering two dates on November 2nd or December 7th. I actually thought it was December 7th, but November 2nd or December 7th for the Board of Commissioners to come in and meet with the Board of Selectmen. Uh, is so, what What's the reason? It's the follow-up of, of when Reese and I and Mary went to the Board of Selectmen. Um, remember, I talked to you about um, just confronting head-on the interference from the Board of Selectmen towards the Housing Authority um, and how the, the issues that it's creating. Okay. Reese, do you have any comments on that? Um, well, I mean, I can say something now or I can say it at this meeting. Uh, do you want me to say it now or? Just to report them. If you just wanna. to report. Well, I think maybe the issue was there, there was one or more people on the Board of Selectmen that assumed uh, that the town of Hadley uh, has authority over the Board of Commissioners and how Hadley Housing Authority is run. And uh, I clarified that with the help of town council last night with that, with a board of select uh, member. And I think the issue is clarified, but um, it might remain that the board, the, the board, the select board as a whole was unaware of um, conversations by particular Board of Selectmen people. And uh, I, I think probably this does need to be clarified. I mean, the tenants, we all live in Hadley. And um, uh, there needs to be a good working relationship and positive regard and most of all respect for the different roles and responsibilities uh, that we have. Board of Commissioners has one, Hadley Housing Authority uh, Executive Director and staff have, have another, a myriad of roles, in fact. And uh, the Board of Selectmen has a completely different role. We all need to get along. We need to work together for the bettering for all of the citizens in Hadley. Uh, and I think that that probably does need to be made clear. But town council did clarify for a board of selectmen member last evening, and um, um, about that the town of Hadley has no legal or financial interest. Uh, they have no role or responsibility with the board of commissioners or Hadley Housing Authority, uh, except but for by state law to appoint um, terms of Board of Commissioners who who left for whatever reason. And in my case, uh, because we had no local tenant organization, the Board of Selectmen then interviewed and uh, voted on who would be the tenant rep. Uh, but they don't have any role other than that. And the government appoint the governor appointee is appointed by the governor. 
So I think all of that was clarified and the town of Hadley does not own this property or any of the buildings on it, which was a misunderstanding that a board of uh, select board member had. So the town council clarified that last evening. Okay. All right, thank you, Reese. Um, do, you, do we still wanna meet with them, uh, Pamela? I, I do think it's important that, so that the whole, um, you know, one of the points that one of our, um, one of our other board, one of our board members has been making is that there is a lot of misunderstanding and miscommunication mm -hmm. going back between some different agencies within the town, or excuse me, different departments in the town um, and the housing authority, and then to get everyone in the same room so we're on the same page. Exactly. Um, so while, so while one select person was um, potentially educated last night, there's an entire select board. Um, there's some new folks on the select um, select board that may not understand the relationship between the town and um, the housing authority, um, okay. or so the I, board of commissioners. Do you want exactly. do you want to set up a time with them then? Yeah, could could I could we do the December seventh? I think the November second might be too close. That's I can't do December seventh. Okay, could we do no, November seventh or excuse me, November second? Yes. What's November? What? That'll be Wednesday. No, I, I can't do Wednesdays. I can't do November 2nd. Okay. I can ask, I believe the Board of Selectmen meet multiple days, uh, or excuse okay. me, multiple every week they meet. I can go back to them and- um, See if you can get a different time than a Wednesday, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, All right. Uh, any, any more? Things, uh, yep. Harry, you have anything? No. Uh, Discussion. Just a question on timing and circumstances uh, setting our meetings. Uh, I guess we couldn't meet on Tuesday at noon because the town clerk's office wasn't open or we couldn't get it posted then it got put to three o'clock which was not doable for some of us uh we knew the meeting was going to be on tuesday maybe we could have had that posted with the town clerk on monday or tuesday or thursday instead of waiting till friday at quarter or 12. so just a timing issue there and then uh i guess the one that i've been hearing about is the fifth member appointment in when we got the uh, letter from the former fifth member uh, in April or May, that that was her last meeting. That's when we thought that the 120 days would kick in if the DHCD was notified uh, right away. And I guess that didn't happen for whatever reason. So timing on some of these meetings or appointments or things, maybe uh, we need to a little, be a little bit more aware of that for, and, and i go back to the regular meeting on tuesday that could have been posted a week earlier we knew when the meeting was we knew we wanted it at noon but it didn't get posted on friday and then the meeting got put to three o'clock and no one could make that consequently we're here today so just a timing thing for information couldn't we have a standard meeting date and time can I can I speak to this? So yes, we so we typically are meeting on the Tuesdays, the third Tuesdays of the month. Um, but so what ends up happening is, and I did explain it to the town clerk, and it and it was just a it was a comedy of errors, not funny, but uh, between because the uh, town clerk's office is most certainly open nine to four on typical days. It was just a a, a happenstance that they weren't there was some issues on that particular day that we were posting. What happens with housing authority agendas, and it may happen with other board agendas throughout the town, I don't know, but I see this happening in all kinds of other housing authorities and in the other communities that we work at with. Um, that we get last minute submissions for our agenda. And then to when you post a meeting and then you amend it, there is confusion. Um, there's mistrust from the tenants. They don't understand. They, they may have looked at the previous agenda and didn't see an item and then it shows up or an item may have been removed and they say, wait, I came to talk about this item. So 
that's one of the reasons why we we typically hold on to the agendas till the last minute but i have talked with the town clerk and going forward we will post it earlier and then we'll just all need to be aware that if there's an agenda uh, revision that there may be questions that come up about was it legitimately posted or not and we'll just deal with those but we will most certainly going forward post those earlier and then as far as the state appointee um, the board of commissioners had agreed to hold on while we were getting a resident board member first uh, because we've had a, all new turnover with the exception of Richie um, and then there's a, there's a learning curve uh, but the depart uh, the governor's office does have the appointees information that was forwarded to the Department of Housing um, and it should be making he that office should be making a decision soon and if they don't it will go to the Board of Selectmen when would it go to the Board of Selectmen I thought because I thought that it was likely that the governor was holding off to appoint until the next governor comes in that's true, but we 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 can't we can't force the governor to do something. Depend, you know, it depends no, on no. how busy the governor right. is. So they may or may not be able. I mean, especially within this this governor cycle, it's a completely different regime coming in. So they're right. going to bring in all their own people. Right. And I believe I stated it at a past meeting. I find I I would put an educated guess that the governor's office is not going to appoint. It's just not going to happen, um, but there is a mechanism in place that then allows the Board of Selectmen to make that appointment. What's and the days? How, how many days does the governor's office have to appoint? The 120 days. From the date they receive the notice? No, from the date that the um, that the Department of Housing received the notice, which was back, in, I believe, September. They were advised on, in October, excuse me, August, but then there, there's a new form that needs to be filled out, and that was filled out, I believe, on September 7th. Okay, so, so they have, the governor's office has 120 days from September 7th. Correct, correct. And then just going back to that selectmen's meeting that Reese and I and Mary went to, um, that was one of the concerns that we had too, was that with these appointments, that the Board of Commissioners should be involved with the Board of Selectmen in interviewing candidates for um, for the open seats. Um, when we were there that night, the, the Board of Health was, um, was attending the meeting, interviewing candidates for an open spot on their board. So that's something we had, we had, re we advised as well, that the Board of Commissioners for the Housing Authority should be involved in these decisions. Yeah. All right. Well, if that, let's move on. Uh, Board of Boards Correspondence, Robert's Rule of Order. I move that we adopt Robert's Rules of Order as our meeting format, which we mostly do, by the way. I'll second that, unless there's anything new that uh, we can uh, help. You, you're doing a second? I'm doing the second, but I also had a statement uh, with it. Well, I'll do the second on Robert's rules unless there is something more recent uh, with all the internet. Maybe there's a different format. I'm familiar with Robert's rules through all the years I've been involved. That's why I would second that. But I don't know if there's anything that's better come, has come along since Mr. Robert and his rules. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I can speak to that. There Please is do. a there's a new edition of Robert's Rules of Order that has taken the whole Robert's Rules of Order parliamentarian system by storm on the oh. internet. And uh, it's overwhelmingly liked and appreciated, and it uh, does incorporate these electronic meetings. And uh, Robert's Rules even has a website with a user's forum that you can see in real time that talks about issues that come up. You can post questions to it, the whole thing, and have all these experts respond. Parliamentarians all over the world use it. So uh, uh, it does work well with our um, our virtual Number meeting 10. format. Number 10. Yes. I'm and of course, listening. we still have to abide by uh, not only the open meeting laws, but 
in the state of Massachusetts, there's rules uh, um, about how to conduct a meeting. Um, there's, in particular, rules about disruption of meeting. And, and we have not been um, vigilant uh, to the point of some of our meetings based on these uh, minutes have been very disruptive. We need to stop that immediately because it's not fair to the public that attends, let alone the Board of Commissioners that have to do work. Okay. So my, motion, right, motion. my, yeah, my second yeah. stands to the motion that Risa made. Motion made and, and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. All right. Exec exec executive director's report. Should be Where'd she go? <laughs> we had a woman knocking on the door, something about her windows. And uh, so. Uh, oh, here's Pamela. Pamela. Here. She, we're back. We're ready to go. Here you we go. Call your report. Your report. report. So I'll keep it quick because somebody's got to go to can our soccer. Can team. you put these back? Over there? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So I did the window. I'm going to put the highlighters back. Hold on. I have a three <laughs> o'clock game in Granby, so Pamela's going to speak fast. Okay, so the um, let's see. You know, we already did the joint board meeting of the selectmen, so that's good. So then, um, let's see. The only other thing I have is so Hadley, um, Hadley TV. Alex, you're I don't know, Alex, if you want to speak. We uh, got some correspondence from the Hadley Public Access TV that they'd like to um, record our meetings for the future. Um, we communicated back and forth that. Um, because it originally came through one of our board members and not our chair. And then we got a, a letter, which I mailed out to the commissioners a couple of weeks ago. I'm, I'm hoping that you all got it, but it was just citing um, the freedom of, um, it's kind of freedom of, freedom of information and the right to re record public meetings as long as um, everyone's aware of it. And I do see that Alex is here. So um, I do think also by having these, um, the virtual meetings that it does help to have to have a little more clarity for the meetings that are going on online. Um, the only other thing I have two other things is the um, we do have a new property manager starting for Hadley, mm -hmm. um, and th that would be um, a gentleman that will be starting on or about no uh, November seventh. Is that correct, Carrie? Um, barring any unforeseen circumstances. So that will be a welcome addition and we'll introduce at an upcoming meeting. Um, and then the, the other item is the Mass Naro conference is coming up. And for those of you that don't know, I don't think anybody's been on one, to one yet. Um, it is as, um, several long sessions, um, day long sessions of trainings on all different items from how to hold a board meeting to um reasonable accommodations um all different all different types there's stuff just comes. for boards of commissioners too yep. so the the main part of it is on monday on the monday uh the is it the 16th or 15th or something like that it's the 14th so the 13th, 14th, 14th yep. yeah so so the big meaty stuff is on monday it's an all-day right. thing a little bit of stuff on sunday evening a little bit of stuff on tuesday morning but the big stuff is on monday so i'm going is anybody else going to go yep so rich uh harry's going Yay! Rich is not going up um, and myself and bruce are going and then we do have six other commissioners from our other two housing authorities that are going as well and we are um piggybacking on a couple of the other housing authorities, Ludlow um, and potentially Granby um, and um, Palmer, Munson, Brimfield with their commissioners. Um, and it's a great opportunity for the commissioners to get together too and say, because every housing authority is autonomous and you have your own policies and things. So there's a lot of um, learning and best practices um, and networking and, you know, just really learn a couple of good days of learning. So we're kind of excited about that. Um, so other than that, and I, you know, I will follow up with the Board of Selectmen to see about a, a date other than a Tuesday to see if they could accommodate maybe a special meeting. That's all I have. I, I do have a comment about the recording is 
to caution everyone to not mention unit numbers and to not mention tenant names or anything that possibly could be identified back to a tenant. Because if these are recorded, then the public can see it on YouTube at any time, and it just puts everyone at risk. That is correct. Yes. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. So do we want to set a date, Richie, for the next meeting? Yeah, we'd like to, yes. If we... Well, you said third Tuesday at noon, right? Anybody got a calendar handy? That would be the 19th, uh, 20th of December? No, November. November. Uh, let, yeah. I know you love <laughs> Christmas, but come on. <laughs> it's the 22nd of November. Is the I'm sorry, the 15th is the third Tuesday because November 1st is a Tuesday. But I would suggest that we go to the 22nd since we're all in conference. It's not no, only that. We, it's not only that we don't get the uh, accounting, accounting report from Greg uh, from Greg from uh, Gary Gary, Gary DePace uh, until that third week third week ends. He's got he's got some lead time there. So yeah, the 22nd is it? Yeah. At noon. And my question will be. As this is what I recall in our last meeting, that our meetings would be board commissioners in person and anybody else would be virtual. Uh, that did not happen today. We're all virtual. So uh, did anybody else hear something different than I did at the last meeting? Because my understanding was the commission would meet in person and the rest of the meeting would be held like a hybrid, a hybrid meeting. Right. So is that kind of like the board of selectmen does? Correct. But but my my comment about that is there's going to be times when a board of commissioner cannot be physically present, but can be present on Zoom. Like I have seen the select board uh, members of the select board participate via their uh, virtual platform, Zoom or whatever it is. And uh, and so can people of the public. So my understanding Harry, is that it goes both ways. A board of commissioner or the public in a hybrid meeting can attend in person or virtually, whichever they prefer uh, or that they can do. So there's going to be times as a board of commissioner when any one of us will have something that takes us away from the area, sickness, whatever, being sick for, for God's sake, you know, but that we're we're not we're well enough we can participate by zoom but not well enough to come to an in-person meeting so i think the hybrid format is good uh and then the the board of commissioners that can or want to attend virtually can freely do so without any issue at all but that is going to mean um that in some situations the documents we review need to be electronically distributed and is that a possibility pamela oh we do yeah we do actually do that but so we do that in addition to um the physically distributing them as well but so the other problem so what what harry's bringing up though too is that this we were previously meeting hybrid but then um, we were allowing the public. This meeting was completely virtual. And the, this came about because I had called Richard and asked that we could go completely hybrid because the public participation had grown out of hand. Um, and there there are some, the viruses are going on again and just all kinds of different issues. And he said yeah. yes for this meeting. Um, that said, when I got here, there were still three people here um, in the in the community room and there were some people over at a unit, um, four people standing outside that had also tried to come to the meeting. So the tenants weren't listening. Listening, And this goes back to back in the um, June or July when we also had, we were doing the hybrid where it was the board of commissioners could be here in person, but that the public had to join virtually. Um, and we ended up having to call the police, unfortunately, because the, the tenants just, several, uh, just a several, two or three,
got out of hand. Um, yeah. And then we can't, so the, I, we're all for public participation and freedom of speech, but when it impedes government acting, you, we can't have that happening. Right, so but it, it's, I mean, I think that's one reason why we're instituting Robert's Rules of Order, where there's a clear mandate to uh, remove any member of the public who is misbehaving or, or disrupting a meeting to the point where the board can't get the work done. It, it's a problem. We're not the only uh, government board of commissioners that's having this problem. You, you can see it in the user forums. It's all across the country right. where members of the public are disruptive. But I still don't think that that's really the focus. The focus is to make it, all these meetings have to be open to the public and, and having a all virtual or hybrid format allows the maximum number of the members of the public to participate. And it's also extremely convenient for the housing authority staff and the board of commissioners. So instead of focusing on, you know, these tenants, which, um, you know, I don't think that should be our focus. I think our focus should be having a hybrid or even an all virtual meeting actually increases the opportunity for the public to, to participate. Unfortunately, um, thank you. Bye bye, Harry. <laughs> yep, thank you. Okay. All right, so we've lost our quorum. Okay, nothing so else to decide. Oh, but right this there. next, yeah, and we're, yeah, I right. vote to adjourn. <laughs> okay, but duty call to you. No, yeah. he, he's a, he's motioning to adjourn, but but I say no, I don't want to. Yeah, until we get this set right now. Uh, what format is our meet our next meeting going to be on on november 22nd so that there is clarity okay so i don't think we actually need a vote for that which is no. because we don't have a quorum um, right but i would i would request that we're we're 100 virtual again so that we especially going into flu covid <laughs> that's travel right seat holidays it's, you're it's, you're right pamela the the we don't test for COVID in drive throughs anymore, but you know who does? Sewage treatment plants. And the <laughs> viral load in sewage is through the roof. Every, almost every county, over 90% of the counties in the USA are on red alert for virus in uh, cess. Basically, it's cess. Yeah, yeah. Um, is that okay with you, Rich, sure. that, we, that we do that? Okay. We can stay virtual, sure. Okay. Perfect. All right. All right. Uh, well, I guess what a meeting! I tell you, are, public comments don't. Are Are we doing public comment? Well, I, the only public we got is Alex. Yeah, they left. I so I did try most. Um, I did try to help the tenants. They were able to use the QR code, um, but they didn't have great signal. Um, Mary, we might want to work on getting or Bruce to um, Wi-Fi in the community room. Um, but they do have Wi-Fi in their apartments well, too. That, that's a, <coughs> that, that's a good idea to. too. We used to have a computer in the community room. Is there a way to put an old desktop in the community room that the uh, tenants can access for these meetings? Because most of them don't have smartphones yeah, yeah. or computers. Right, and, and I just want to note too, though, with a virtual meeting, they can call an a hundred number and listen and and communicate through a phone. It's a phone call, um, but we could check in with our IT guy. Our IT guy is extremely busy, um, but we can check on that and and work on getting the computer back up and in, in there. The one that was in there is gone. It's it's no longer good. Right, right. Well, it was really really old. So. Yeah. So maybe we could get an old desktop or something if he's got something he could cobble together that because that will greatly help uh, the tenants feel included. I'm just giving you a heads up. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. All set. All Is right. that computer just to observe the meeting? Is no, the they meeting? used it for he did a private mode or um, whatever, and um, it was like a la um, library computer. So okay, but was it for it. the meeting or did it have other purposes? It did also go to Champ. It went to Champ too. Okay. 
I was but thinking they could about, use it. Yeah, was, the tenants could go in and use it. I was thinking about like the projector or something having the meeting on a screen. No, that they could listen. Okay, just checking. No. Just a public computer. That's all it was. Is it was on that wooden desk. And when we closed down for COVID, we took it out. But maybe we could put something back in so that the tenants can observe these meetings and feel like they're encouraged to participate. That would be go a long way. Perfect. Okay. All right. All right. Thank meeting you. adjourned.